are headed over to the first um, design meeting for the Chesapeake Bay Foundation project. So, uh, mouth of Linhaven River, see the tanker out in Chesapeake Bay. Like We're right here at Pleasure House Point in Virginia Beach, and this is a over 100 acre piece of property that's been preserved, bought by the city and Chesapeake Bay Foundation. The Chesapeake Bay Foundation project is a environmental center and it's about a 10,000 square foot educational facility. Uh, this is the core team, the contractor, CBF, and our um, architects. Uh, it's a fantastic team. It's pretty exciting. But for today, what we're attempting to do is we're going to try and better understand the problem or the, the, the project statement. And we're also going to try and look at it through the lens of the living building challenge. It's been a long uh, process to get to this point. Um, we were four, almost four years of land searching. It's been a good year and a half. Um, working through uh, the acquisition of this site. This is a challenge, and this project will, if, if taken seriously, is going to challenge every person around this table. And so to see the thing starting to um, become real is very exciting. To actually be here with this group, see the people that are coming, the interest, and uh, the possibility of you know building the next great green building city about how you park. It helps to protect the neighborhood from flooding because maybe there is some berms that are created along that edge. That's another and you can often see a 20 degree uh, temperature drop or increase between summer and winter. And if access is your third priority after preservation, restoration, and education, then that's it. If there are no parking lots, if everybody has to I don't think that's probably the same. Knowing that the team is very talented and very committed and that knowing who the client is and their, you know, history of commitment to these sort of principles and ideas. And provide it before we even make that switch. I knew it was definitely worth my time. <laughs> and um, I think my real goal of something like this is to, is to help people reach the highest potential possible without the self-imposed human imposed barriers that we often throw in our own way. I think that has the possibility there, and so that's what we need to do. And so it's a bigger picture. And how can we say, no, we, we aren't going, we're, we're going to do good? I think the magic thing that happens is that when you get a group of diverse perspectives together in the same space, that's when the magic happens. And drop off right by the building, then you have to get out. I think next slide probably gets Yes, you're, you're exactly signal. right. Yeah. We we need to take a step back and say, this is important. Yeah. What do we need to do to, to, to make this work? And that's that's why we're that's, that's why, why we're, we're here. here. Yeah. This project is like a pebble in the pond. And I'm really interested in the ripples. What are the things that spread way beyond the initial problem and the initial solution? to really influence the body of regulatory language, the region, how the students who come to utilize this facility begin to think about the world around them. That, that's the story that I think is most interesting. And it, it has to do with the impact that we as designers and builders and owners can make in, in the world through the lens of this one project in this one region.